Hey guys, before the video begins, I would like to make a very important announcement in regards to a new channel made by a friend of mine, Kelly Productions. He has created a new channel named The Watch. It's a channel dedicated to making superhero films and miniseries of a new universe that has been created and named The Watch. And the first film is out right now. If you follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or even on this very channel, you know I've spoken about a film that's been involved that I've been involved with. Well, this is it. The Midnight Warden. I'd highly appreciate it if you guys subscribed to this channel, liked the video, turned on notifications, and shared this film with your friends so we can make more films in the future. The more awareness of our films, the more we can make. You can find a link to the channel in the description below of this video, or click on my channel and go to the section channels, and it will be there as we speak. And with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoy today's video. What's going on, buddy? My name is Elburns, and welcome back to yet another reaction. Now, I if you watch my channel a lot, you don't really see me do a lot of Finance at Freddy's stuff on this channel. Even though I'm a heavy Finance at Freddy's person, I don't react to any of the, uh, the content related to it that much. But very rarely do I do. It's just not often, because it's not something I like to do on this channel that much. But considering now my back on the Finance of Freddy's binge of things, I'm going to go ahead and react to some more Finance of Freddy stuff, including some uh, music videos and such in the very near future. But today, I got something a little bit different in terms of Finance of Freddy's. This isn't. This video is called the Under. And this I don't even know how to say it. Under is the terror of Golden Freddy, the antagonist's antagonist, a Finance of Freddy's character analysis. This video was made by MR Springs. I think I saw him do another video like this, like the one with the uh, Springstrap's design and why it's the peak of horror. I don't know if that was the same guy or if it was a different YouTuber altogether. But since this video popped up, it grabbed my attention because I, I know the whole, whole story of Finance of Friday. I grew up with it, but I don't do videos on it. But we're going to change that with today, and we're going to go ahead and get right into today's video in three, two, one, go. And it's a very long one. Warning, this video contains jump scares and spooky images. You should have expected this. It's a fine answer for Eddie's video. Yeah, very much. The video is a question being a character's analyst of one of the, mo the spookiest dudes in the entire series. If you got mad at the inclusion, inclusion of the things you warned, Sure about it. August 13th, 2014. And the time Hines and Freddy's came out. Oh, one. Okay. Oh, and Markiplier first encountered Golden Freddy. Oh, my God. oh God! What the fuck? What the fuck? Okay! Is that the first time anybody ever came across Golden Freddy? Because the game was only five days old at that point. This moment with how silly it may seem nowadays, changed the course of not only the FNAF series, but indie horror as a whole, forever. FNAF was just a simple little indie game that upon first glance wouldn't really have seemed like it had much depth beyond the spooky animatronics are coming out. Nobody expected this game to blow up. I didn't either. I was terrified to find it Freddy's when it first came out because I was 13 when the first game came out. After you while you're defenseless, but what truly gave it its longevity was the mystery behind it. <laughs> Markiplier, arguably the most popular horror Let's Player of all time, and is on the second episode of his playthrough of this month's new horror game. During the second video, he discovers something completely by chance. Something that most casual players would have never seen in this game. Fun fact. Golden Freddy's original name was Yellow Bear. <laughs> and then Golden Freddy stuck and Ch Scott changed it. <laughs> Some kind of secret character. A ghostly yellow bear. Who he and his fan collectively dubbed Golden Freddy. There he is. Secret characters. Secret posters? Rare events? The Bite of 87? This game had so much mystery and it kept people asking questions and wanting more. Which is in turn one of the biggest contributors to the reason why the FNAF fan base even exists. And I'd argue the biggest contributor is this silly little ghost bear. Mostly obscured Definitely. by shadows with some gold peeking through, 
the cold, angry stare with the two very small white dots in the Where eyes, you? barely <laughs> giving it somewhere to look at. Just like, oh man, for such a simple recolor, Golden Freddy is way scarier than Classic Freddy. His role in this game is simple. Comment which uh, variation of Golden Freddy is the most scariest to you. To me, it's the Final Fantasy Freddy's 4 one. Full, yet intricate. On nights 1 and 3, there's a rare chance that a poster on the end of the left hall will change into a picture of Golden Freddy's stare. Upon seeing this and pulling down your camera, Golden Freddy appears in your office with the words It's Me and other spooky, scary images flashing on the screen. To get rid of him after this, the only thing you can really do is pull up your camera, and then pulling it back down, he'll just have vanished into thin air. But if you don't pull up your camera and you just stare at him, he kills you, and not only that, but he completely crashes your game. And on top of that, he had a completely unique jump scare sound to the other characters. Then Scott chose Golden Freddy yeah. as a vessel to continue the story of the game after it's already released. If With you a 1987, 1987 mode. into the custom night menu originally, it would do nothing. But later on, Scott did update the game, and now when you do it, this happens. It made this happen. Oh, and the game just crashes. And now obviously huh. the second game was going to be a lot more story driven, so he wanted to use this to set up the second game. And due to the existence of this one secret- I did not know that. ...secret animatronic, the internet decided to do what the internet does best and spread false information! Yay! Yeah! False information. So yeah, Scott just made one of the most iconic video game easter eggs of all time, and now he's got a follow up to it with the sequel, Five Nights at Freddy's 2. Rather, the prequel. Now, FNAF 2 was all about chaos. Yeah. There was a ton of new- I played Final Fantasy Freddy's 2. And 3. I never played 4. Or, or 5 or 6. I played 7. Didn't play any of the other new ones that have come out recently. Character. The reason why I don't- Well, actually, I do- I had Final Fantasy Freddy's 2, but it's on my brother's account. Long before I created my own Steam account. So Mitchell now has the game. If anybody wants to go ask him to go play it on Twitch or something, he has the game for free on with, that I bought. <laughs> I'm not mad or anything else. I beat the game anyway. I didn't do the custom night. I didn't do that. I'm not. I'm not I don't have. I don't have the patience for that. Characters from the first game returned with way scarier designs, including Golden Freddy, who honestly I'd argue. He's, he's a lot less scary in this game. He is. And this version of him has been dubbed by fans Withered Golden Freddy. Although, fun fact, this name has actually never been canon. In Ultimate Custom Night, he's just called Golden Freddy. And on this toy, he's just called Golden Freddy. But look at this stupid little keychain that's clearly a mixture of FNAF 1 and FNAF 2 Golden Freddy, but it's just called Golden Freddy. Or this other stupid keychain, which is the exact same situation. The fact that these two characters have the same name honestly just tells me that these are just two different designs for the exact same character. Right. Which makes sense because Golden Freddy is a ghost. If there's a character who could just change their design on the fly, it would be Golden Freddy. Um, with it Golden Was Golden Freddy, well, in terms of like actual like jump scares, was Golden Freddy in Final Fantasy Freddy's 3? I don't think so. Freddy, I don't like Aside him from much. the mini games. Just gonna have one Golden Freddy. He doesn't have that like angry aura. He's too bright. Like you, can, he's way too. You can see him way too clearly. FNAF One Golden Freddy is always obscured by shadows, and he's always super mysterious and spooky. This guy, I mean, he just looks like a crumpled old suit. He looks kind of sad to be honest. Doesn't really fit the notion later on in the series of the vengeful spirit. All right, back on track. Something I forgot to mention earlier is how Golden Freddy isn't even an easter egg in FNAF 2. No, he's not. He's just a regular animatronic. He's even on the custom night menu. And I honestly really like this decision. Instead of rehashing the easter egg, Scott turned the easter egg into an actual part of the game with its own mechanics and its own purpose. And I put very light emphasis on purpose because Golden Freddy really doesn't do anything in this game. Like, yeah, he's a cool inclusion, but all the story in this game is revolving around the puppet. Golden True. Freddy just kind of shows up and he doesn't really have a reason to be here. He's just kind of like, hey, what's up, bro? And honestly, I have no problem with that. What I think it's that? funny. Oh, that's his. And you know what? This video That's his about... mouse doing that. I keep thinking it's my mouse doing that. A spooky ghost bear appreciation. And this spooky ghost bear, while not as good as this one, 
he's alright. Now, there's two major things we have to touch on for this. Let's start off with the design change. So, I already went over how I thought that the design change can basically be bogged down to, he's a ghost, he can look however he wants to. But, I do think there might be a little more to this. I'm not gonna go in the name territory or like any major lore, but Golden Freddy is one of the original Missing Children's Incident victims, and clearly is tied to the FNAF 1 and Withered animatronics, but of course, when the Withered animatronics get refurbished into the FNAF 1 animatronics, Golden Freddy, why would they repair that one? Yeah, so, true. So, that basically confirms that Golden Freddy is supernatural, and is completely a ghost. There's no doubt about it. Even if you didn't think that for some reason, there's like, how could, why would this character get repaired? Like, that just doesn't make sense. So Gold it doesn't, because he's just a supernatural entity that can change, change however he chooses to be. He is a part of the fight by Visit Kids incident, but he's not physically showing himself. I'm trying to think of a way to put that. But yeah, either way, he's a... He, well, he, well, he is still technically a suit that just can't be used as an animatronic anymore. It's just now an empty suit. Golden Freddy appears to be taking on the form of whatever animatronics are closest to fit in line with um, basically all of his other counterparts. But that's just what I think. If you think anything different, please feel free to put it in the comments. No, I... So, um, I agree. yeah, I'm gonna try to stay kind of out of lore stuff and mainly just go over to the impact this character leaves. Mm -hmm. But now let's talk about name. Yeah, because the comment section will rip us apart, both of us. In the Custom Night of FNAF 2, Golden Freddy is called Golden Freddy. Now, this might not seem weird nowadays, like, at all. He's called that- Is he about to mention the Yellow Bear, orig his original name, Yellow Bear? Church. He's called that everywhere. They, they say Golden Freddy a ton. I thought that was just the official name, you say. Well, it is the official name, but it wasn't originally supposed to be. Scott has this tendency to adopt fan-given names just because they're popular, because he didn't feel the need to actually put a name for the character in the video game. Um, but in the game files for FNAF 1, Golden Freddy is simply titled Yellow Bear. There it is. <laughs> which I honestly prefer way more than Golden Freddy, because it just kind of gives a divide between these two characters. Like, this isn't just a recolor of Freddy, it's a completely different entity. It's got like a very cryptic, kind of creepy name. And I think Yellow Bear is just a lot more just like effective for like a ghost. But I do get Golden Freddy. I mean, it's a lot more straightforward. Like, yep, that's a golden version of Freddy. Let's call him Golden Freddy. But I don't know, I just think Yellow Bear sounds a lot better. It's like a local cryptid, you know, like the you know like the spooky ghosts you see outside your house at night. You guys got that? Oh. <laughs> okay. I had to turn around because because my my door is open back there and it's just nothing but pitch black there. <laughs> I just had to look, and he's talking about all this, so I had to look. Hmm. I guess you guys don't have anything like trench coat man. But now that that whole thing is over, let's move on to the next chapter of the video. Mine's a phrase three. Let's go. I got some water for the spring locks. So. And more water. FNAF 3. <laughs> this game is complicated for Golden Freddy. I'm always drinking water throughout these videos. Every single video I make, I either have water in the background or I just don't drink it at all. And I'm drinking it in front of you guys. I, I just, I, I just like drinking water. So the mini games is pretty cut and dry how it works. But in the actual game itself, the only really time we see Golden Freddy is Phantom Freddy, who has Golden Freddy's model, but or Withered Golden Freddy to be specific. But I really don't think this means anything. It's Phantom. There's no ties to Golden Freddy. It's just Phantom Freddy. So I don't, really don't see anything. Phantom Freddy appearance is so unimportant to the lore that in Help Wanted, he literally just uses classic Freddy. Really? Really? I gotta go back and look at uh, the VR this. version of the game. But in the corner of your office, there's this really weird dude who just kind of sits there. And this, I do believe, is Golden Freddy. I don't remember Freddy seeing that. Three. Or at least some kind of manifestation of Golden Freddy. It's kind of unclear. Because if we look at this thing, it's like 
it could be Shadow Freddy, but Shadow Freddy has glowing teeth and eyes. This one doesn't have doesn't that. Doesn't have so any of that. assume it's Golden Freddy. But it's also kind of more of a brown color. But that could just be because it's supposed to be burnt looking. But at the same time, what, what is this? I don't know what it is. I don't remember seeing that. But it's probably not that important. So in the good ending of FNAF 3, we see all the spirits be set free, including Golden Freddy. Um, but Golden but Freddy has like two no spirits. This is canon because like the the puppet is there too and also gets set free, and we know the puppet didn't get set free because of FNAF 6. So um, yeah, this mini game this mini game doesn't happiest day doesn't mean too much, but I'll go over it anyway. So basically, the puppet and all the other spirits um, give Golden Freddy's the happiest day a big cake, and then he's satisfied, and then they all do they all happy ever after. That's it. That's it basically. But even if the good ending is canon, the console remaster of FNAF 3 really says otherwise with the music choice for the good ending. Because this Why? music is menacing as hell. For some additional context, a lot of people don't know this, the original FNAF 3 ending theme was actually stock music. It was not actually um, something that was original to the game. And um, in the console remaster, there was original tracks replacing all of the stock music in the first three games. And this song was replaced by a much more menacing song, which is very interesting. Play the song. I don't consider it creepy, more like a somber tone. I'm going to be adding this song to my sleep playlist later. <laughs> you think I'm joking? So, yeah, no, I don't really uh, consider that creepy. Sounding I personally song, don't for sure. Definitely doesn't sound like it belongs on the good ending. So I'm going to just take this as a sign that Maybe the ending wasn't so good. Considering the absence of Golden Freddy or the puppet in this ending, I'm gonna say that in the good ending of FNAF 3, which could be canon, Golden Freddy and the puppet were not set free. But we're focused on Golden Freddy. We got pretty sidetracked there. Let's go back to Golden Freddy. Yeah. So I think it's about time we address the elephant in the room, which is Fredbear. So in FNAF 2, F Fredbear's family diner is just kind of mentioned and it's kind of thrown away instantly. It's not really elaborated on much. All we knew back then was that it was the original location and not much else. But then in FNAF 3, we see Fredbear's in some mini games, And we see that the cast was Golden Freddy, or Fredbear, along with Spring Bonnie. However, True. Golden Freddy being Fredbear didn't last long because when FNAF 4 came around, it was retconned to be a yellow bear with a Coolest. purple hat and bow tie instead of a yellow bear with a black hat and bow tie, meaning that these two are 100% separate characters, even if they were originally not separate characters. So now that all that's out of the way, and we, we kind of touched on FNAF 4 a little bit, let's move on to the next half of the series, which is when Golden Freddy kind of took a little backseat up until uh, Ultimate Custom Night. So let's go over the era of the series from FNAF 4 yep. through Pizzeria Simulator. And also, um, at this point in the recording process, um, yesterday, Matt Pat posted a video about um, how Golden Freddy isn't real. I'm gonna love to hear all the funny comments that I'm gonna love to hear all the funny comments. You guys are gonna be so funny. You're gonna be so funny talking about Matt Pat going insane. I know, it's it's so funny. Fun fact, I haven't seen that video yet. What did I just pause on? <laughs> it, it is kind of funny though. I find that funny. I mean, seriously, how does anyone find that funny? Okay. <laughs> My ears. <laughs> I'll react to that video soon, because I actually have a few cu couple of Game Theory videos on my channel. Oh, not on my channel, but in the playlist where I react to these videos. Some of them have caught my attention. Awaiting the return. So, FNAF 4, let's talk about that, huh? 
So in this game, it was basically retcon that Golden Freddy and Fredbear <coughs> were the same character. So Golden Freddy is just like some random ghost now, and Fredbear is his own thing. So in this game, they basically mainly focus on Fredbear, you know, the one with the purple hat and bow tie. So there's not really a lot Golden Freddy related to talk about with this game. So let's just move on from it. Because trust me, I do not want to get into the cryptic lore of FNAF 4. It is... I, it I is a mess! talking about it, to be honest. It's a mess. It really is. I mean, if Matt Pat had trouble getting into FNAF 4's lore that took like several episodes just to figure out, it is very hard to figure out. Oh boy. Now on to sister location, and this game doesn't. I forgot really about. Si I forgot sister location had a custom night. Uh, thing. Have anything Golden Freddy related, despite this one character, Yendo. And oh my gosh, this has got to be the weirdest character in any FNAF game. Who is the most forgotten find of Freddy's character in all of FNAF? Comment down below. So. If my theory about Golden Freddy being a ghost and then turning to look however he wants depending on which location he's in or fitting in, then would that make Yendo Golden Freddy in the appearance of a Funtime character? Because Yendo does act exactly like Golden Freddy in the Cusp of Night mode, so I mean it could make sense. Golden, um, Yendo can also disappear into thin air in the Funtime nuts. Auditorium, which is the main place where he would show up in the game. Or at least as an Easter egg. In the custom night mode, he is just a normal character, but he functions almost exactly like Golden Freddy. And I think it's interesting that he's also got a yellow eyes, so you it's might think he's kind of correlated in a way. I don't know. He's very, very strange. I don't really have a lot to say about Yendo, nor do I think even if it is Golden Freddy, it would be very lore important because it probably isn't even if it he doesn't. is the same. I don't know. I just think it's kind of interesting. I guess Yendo is the most forgotten find to Freddy's character. They bring it up. Now I'm gonna kind of go off the beaten path here a little bit, cause I want to talk about FNAF AR Golden Freddy. AR. Cause there's a lot of important Golden stuff. Golden Freddy's in the AR game. Golden Simulator. And it's gonna take a while, so let's get into this first before that, cause it'd be kind of awkward if I just kind of shove this in between that. So FNAF AR likes to amplify the weird aspect of Golden Freddy, which I honestly really like. And oh my gosh, he learned how to stand. Let's clap for ah. him. Wow, I'm so proud of him. Woo! Yeah, um, <laughs> really good job there. Um, I, I really like the animations and stuff on him. He's just like... They did a really good job representing the character. Um, I get that, the fact that he has eyes and he's just kind of... The model's kind of lazy, but... Nah, eh, I mean, and I don't really care that much. His workshop animation is really cool, how he just kind of twitches around violently. And you can see, like... You can hear, like, little, like, squishy noises. Like, there's something inside of his suit. It's very strange. I never played AR, just so you guys know. It's also got this really cool ambience with some really creepy laughter in it, it's cool. See, so yeah, that's basically it for FNAF AR. I just thought I'd mention it because people probably get mad if I didn't. So, um, yeah, FNAF AR Golden Freddy, he's pretty cool. Oh, we're in G-Mod. Oh, I see him and he's in the building. Where is he now? Tonight. Now, for the playthrough of FNAF 6, Golden Freddy really isn't very important during the playthrough. But afterwards, he becomes extremely important. Maybe saying, afterwards, well what happened after the fire? Well, I've, been, I've explained this a few times in videos before. But I'm aiming for this video to be my definitive explanation of this event, because it's kind of complicated, but I think I've been able to um, line it out pretty well here, so let's get into it. 
Now, the book Five Nights at Freddy's The Ultimate Guide gives us some Ultimate great guide. insight on the fact that the Fazbear Fright story, The Man in Room 1280, is very directly attached to the actual canon lore. Of course, it is Fazbear Fright, so it loves to use stand-ins, like, for example, Cassidy is replaced by a kid named Andrew, and I don't know how I made through this whole video without mentioning Cassidy. Cassidy is the spirit inside of Golden Freddy, so, um, yeah, I just kind of tucked that away. It's not really that important, but, like, there's a, that's the <laughs> it's kid, very that's important. The kid who is Golden Freddy. Our first bit in the guide that gives us a connection between the story and the game is this little panel where it shows the alleyway Easter egg of Scrap Trap. And here you can see it details that there's a poster in the background that appears to resemble the Hercules Hospital from the Man in Room 1280, which is very, very interesting. Because later on, they straight up just say that the guy in the hospital is William Afton after the FNAF 6 fire. So, um, yeah, that makes it really easy. So the direct connection between the story and the game universe obviously means that some... You know what, never mind. <laughs> Something similar to the events of this story... I was gonna say something, but I'm like... Eh, I'm gonna get some fiery comments for it. ...it happened within the game lore. So I think it's pretty easy to swap out Andrew, the vengeful spirit in the story, with Cassidy, the vengeful spirit in the games. And then we can tie the brutal nightmares the man is having in the story to Ultimate Custom Night. Which would explain why William Afton isn't dead in Security Breach because he didn't actually die. He was just set in a coma where he was forced to relive nightmares of his past. And due to the final cutscene in Ultimate Custom Night, we know that the big mastermind behind it all was Golden Freddy. I'll play the cutscene here. Here's the cutscene. The really hard cutscene to get in probably all of FNAF history. Funny enough, I actually made a video of Ultimate Custom Night on my channel when the when Ultimate Custom Night, Night first came out, like back in 2018. You're gonna have to go find that video. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm probably gonna. You know, I'll probably put it in the comment section because that's actually the first uh, terms of Finance for Fridays related stuff I posted on my channel. I'm pretty sure. It's an unnerving cutscene. I see you. I saw her in the reflection of my screen. Luna's here. It's a really cool cutscene. So now that all that's out of the way, let's get into how, like, this concept is just like, this ghost is so mad at the person who killed them that they are literally refusing to let them die because they don't think that's good enough for them. And Golden Freddy literally wants to just torture Afton and keep him alive just to torture him, which is really brutal, but also kind of cool. Like, I just like that concept. If you're gonna keep Afton alive, I think that's a really cool reason to make him not die in the FNAF 6 fire. Um, I, I honestly, I think it's just way cooler than him just surviving like he did in FNAF 3. I think giving an actual, like, lore reason that he survived is kind of awesome, especially if it's that. So, I do honestly like that plot point. I don't mind it at all. Um, I know a lot of people wish he just died, but I True. do honestly like that. I, I do too as well. Cool. And also how it just kind of flips the concept of Ultimate, of ultimate Cups and Night Beauty. <laughs> Scripting, man. Follow your scripts. And how it just kind of flips the concept of Ultimate Custom Night being hell on its head <laughs> and instead of Tacoma, which, you know, we weren't really expecting, but hey, that's neat. And I believe that the final cutscene that we see in the Ultimate Custom Night is Afton escaping into the circuit boards as Glitch Trap from the perspective of Golden Freddy. Because for those who didn't know, at the end of the Man in Rue 1280, Afton is rolled to this Fazbear Entertainment, like, storage center, where from all the, like, I guess, like, remnant around the place, um, I guess he just kind of collapses, and this lets his spirit freed from Cassidy, where he then goes into some circuit boards, which then leads to Glitch Trap. 
so yeah, pretty pretty cool. I think that this cutscene. Of I still don't like that concept though, with um William Afton surviving, with Golden Freight, and he goes to become a glitch trap. I wish glitch trap and William Afton were two completely separate ideological creatures. I mean, I hope that they're in terms of like future Final Fantasy Freddy stuff. Aside from security breach, glitch trap is now a separate and entity aside from William Afton. Because the William Afton, we all know, is should be completely dead. But Glitch Trap is a thing. So what if it's just a copied clone of William Afton's consciousness? That's all I really hope for in terms of Finance and Freddy's related stuff. Because William Afton should be completely dead. The official spiritual version of him should be completely dead. Glitch Trap I like because he's a different concept of William Afton. Who is also just a computer virus. So. Because a spirit can't take over an animatronic from all the way over there. I mean, look at the Afton ending in Security Breach. It's Glitch Trap. It's not William. Golden Freddy, like, zooming out is definitely, like, supposed to be that from Golden Freddy's perspective and how Golden Freddy felt about that. So, yeah. Yay, FNAF lore makes sense. No, it doesn't. For one. <laughs> All right, now let's talk about the elephant in the room about Ultimate Custom Night. Um, Fredbear. Scott went out of his way to make sure that Fredbear's model was different for the two seconds that you see him. And I think that's that very telling that Golden Freddy and Fredbear are not the same in any way. If you had any, if you had any doubts that they weren't the same, this should be your reassur reassure. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I'm not even gonna say it again. This should be a reassurance. And I know that Withered Golden Freddy um, death coining him summons Fredbear, and I know that could mean something, but I just mean like the basic idea of Golden Freddy and Fredbear, they're not the same animatronic. That's basically the point I'm trying to get across. Fredbear has the following. He's got smaller cheeks, he's got thinner eyebrows, he's got smaller ears, he's got a smaller hat, he's got a slightly wider torso, and he's got a slightly bigger snout. So, Scott clearly did want to make it sure that these two characters were distinctly different. Um, all those details I just listed, and the fact that his hat and bow tie are purple. So now I think it's about time that we move on to the next game in the timeline, Help Wanted, which we already kind of brushed on with Glitch. The Golden Freddy is it you know, in Help Wanted, wanted. now. Right? I mean, in terms of the storyline, he's not there, but is he there as a character? Alright, so in this game, Golden Freddy doesn't really show up at all in the base game, but he does show up in the DLC, Curse of Dreadbear, but only once. Is he? So in the victory screen in Curse of Dreadbear, where you kind of get, you know, oh, this scene, present, this screen. There are these three posters, one on the left, one on the right, and one behind you. And if all three of these posters are this clown poster from FNAF 6, weirdly, um, if you throw all the darts at the clowns, this happens to the room you're in, and this has been backed up by the ultimate guide, so this is an actual easter egg that is in the game, it's just extremely rare, but it's me. And if you didn't know, it's me since the first game has been a phrase associated specifically with Golden Freddy. It's me is always a phrase that's kind of associated with the fact that Golden Freddy's haunting something. The biggest note to this is how it's kind of written all over the FNAF 1 location. And what this tells me is that Golden Freddy might have followed after Afton into the VR game after all. Because why else would he be haunting this game? True. And this is later evidenced in... Security Breach. Wait, Golden Freddy's in Security Breach? So I feel like this is pretty common knowledge at this point, but in the original version of Security Breach, they later patched this out because it's a huge lore hint that they probably didn't want to give out so directly. But in the game files of Princess of Princess Quest and Security Breach, oh, the right. golden the princess, princess Quest girl get, is actually uh, named Kate Cassidy, games. which, you know, I told you to keep that in the back of your head earlier. Well, that there it is, Cassidy, boom, Princess, Princess Quest, Cassidy, woo! <laughs> So what this tells me is that Afton and Golden Freddy both found their way into the VR game, and then eventually Golden Freddy made his way into the Princess Quest arcade games, which the entire premise of those is to defeat Afton. And you know, Cassidy Golden Freddy is Afton's biggest hater, 
and seeing Afton try to pass on his legacy to another, um, basically innocent victim is probably gonna piss them off a little bit. So I think the princess trying to stop Afton being Golden Freddy makes a ton of sense in the gold color, just kind of like, yeah. Sticks. It, it just sticks. Another very interesting thing is how the music for Princess Quest is actually the same music that was in Freddy in Space 2. And if you didn't know, in Freddy in Space 2, Christ. Golden Freddy is... <laughs> I wasn't expecting that sound effect, so I jumped out of my skin. Weirdly, the only character who doesn't change their design at all to fit in with the game, it's literally just Golden Freddy. But um, yeah, here's the theme right here. Freddy in space. What? It's the same theme, it's just one is more upped than the other. But back to the important stuff. So, now we're at the final game, so let's just... What was the big point? You mean the latest game? <laughs> I think Golden Freddy has the potential to be one of the scariest and, like, coolest FNAF characters, but they just aren't utilizing him as much as they should. Just this, like, mysterious, hatred-filled ghost animatronic is just such a cool idea. Like, instead of making him bound to an arcade machine in Security Breach, imagine if you, like, as you're walking around the Pizza Plex throughout the game, there were multiple, like, sightings of Golden Freddy, and Gregory would notice him, and he'd be, like, just kind of, you know, a spooky ghost. Right. And then you'd be asking about him. He would be, like, a second mystery next to Vanny, and then at the Afton ending, what if Golden Freddy took out Afton instead of the Blob? That would have been kind of sick. That would have been cooler. I don't cooler. know, just something simple like that. I feel like there's a lot of cool ways to use a character who is completely against the main antagonist, but also not on your side. I think there's a lot of potential to do cool things with that, but they aren't really doing anything with it. Like, yes, I do like Princess Quest, but I do feel like there could be better ways to use this character. Because Golden Freddy isn't completely a good guy. He kills no, the innocent night guards. In the man in room 1280, he actually stabs a nurse with a syringe because she was trying to put down Afton, and that would obviously end Golden Freddy's, you know, nightmare torture realm for Afton. I did not know that. So Golden Freddy didn't want Afton to die. So Golden Freddy literally tried to use tried to like stab the nurse as a defense to keep Afton alive. So Golden Freddy's not entirely story. a good character. And I think that's really cool, giving a character that you'd think would be kind of sympathetic have some kind of a villainous undertone. Or doing bad things inherently, but having an understandable motive to do them. But of course in Security Breach, they kind of threw away this angry Golden Freddy thing in, in exchange for... Instead of Cassidy wanting to keep Afton alive and torture him, Cassidy just wants him dead to save Vanessa and not let him carry on his legacy. Which is cool and all, but I don't know, I just feel like it could be cooler. So, just in conclusion to all this, Golden Freddy's a really cool character who just often gets overlooked in comparison to a lot of other important FNAF characters. Which I think is a shame, because he's a lot more than a recolor, and a lot of people don't really realize that. Do I think yeah, we've seen the last of He's important to the whole storyline of FNAF? FNAF. No, not at all. And I honestly think that Ruin seems like a really good chance to incorporate some paranormal activity. Just saying. Abandoned buildings just be spooky like that. So I'd like to leave this video off pretty open-ended. Because there's a lot of ways to interpret this. If you guys want me to play the Ruin DLC in the future, I'll buy Finds of Freddy's Security Breach, play through the whole game off screen, and go to the Ruin DLC. If you guys want me to do it, let me know in the future. Because I've already got a couple of other games lined up right now that I'm going to be recording. I just haven't started. Stuff, and if your interpretation was different than mine, that's perfectly fine. But I'm just going to hope that whatever they do next with this character is something substantial. So yeah, thank you for watching the whole video. I really appreciate it. Um, if you liked it, make sure you like it. And then if you subscribe, maybe. And also share it or something. I don't know. Um... Yeah, anyway, see you guys in the next video. Goodbye. Alrighty. <laughs> okay. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that reaction video. That actually brought out some details. I actually had absolutely no knowledge 
on Golden Freddy on? I mean, there was quite a lot of it I already knew because I, I watched Game Theory a lot. And also tried to put some of the p puzzles, pieces of the puzzle together myself when Final Fantasy Freddy's first came out. And then I just completely uh, lost track of the entire storyline after 6. After uh, Ultimate Custom Night, I literally lost, went off the road for like a year or two with Final Fantasy Freddy's. It was just like this story is getting too ridiculous now to keep up with. But that was a couple of years ago. Now, so now I'm back on the binge of Final Fantasy's related stuff. And in the future, I'll be reacting to more Final Fantasy Friday stuff. So if you guys have any suggestions, like music videos or stuff like that, let me know in the comment section. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.